Spintronics is about to hit the consumer market. This has been in the research stage for decades, but you're about to see the results on your phone or laptop, hopefully in the next couple of years. What is Spintronics? What's the current stage of research? And what's next? I have a brief summary. Spintronics is short for spin electronics. This means it uses the spin of electrons to process and store data. The spin gives electrons a tiny magnetic moment, and this is what one works with. This is unlike traditional electronics, which rely on moving around electrons with their electric charges. The big promise of spintronics is that it takes far less energy to work with the electron spin than with the electron charge, and it produces less heat heat. This can make devices much more energy efficient. A key application of Spintronics is Magnetoresistive Random Access Memory, MRAM for short. The random access memory is the working memory of your devices. This data is currently lost when you power down. For MRAM, this isn't the case. It can hold the data even when you switch power off. Better still, it's much faster. The current standard memory has access times typically in the range of 50 or so nanoseconds. With MRAMs, you can do it in the range of a few nanoseconds. For consumers like you and I, this means that once Spintronics hit the market, battery life will go up noticeably because energy demand goes down and devices will work faster. Spintronics is also a hot candidate for AI training because it could be faster and less energy consuming. Sounds great, but how far is the research along? Here is the good news. It's out of the lab and the first applications have been around for a couple of years now. So far, it's mostly used for special purposes like certain sensors. But market analyses say that in the next couple of years, we'll see the big impact in phones, tablets and laptops, starting with the high-end devices. Various market analysts have predicted that the Spintronics market is about to grow by more than a factor of 20 in the next 10 years. The progress in this area just in the past month has been remarkable. A research team working with the microchip producer TSMC just announced that they have a Spintronic memory chip with an access time of one nanosecond and a storage time of about a decade. This means faster mistakes with longer regrets, basically the epitome of progress. A Chinese research team just published a paper saying they can use Spintronics to combine data storage and processing into a single device, which drastically improves energy efficiency, especially for AI queries, by up to 100 times. A team from Korea, meanwhile, has found a way to fix one of the energy loss channels in Spintronics, which they say will further improve energy efficiency by about a factor of three. Pretty much all the major hardware producers are in on this, from TSMC to Samsung to IBM. They're all working on Spintronics already. And there is more to come, because researchers are now working on another Spintronics application, the Magnon circuits. In those, information is moved around by spin waves. This means, importantly, that the electrons themselves don't have to be moved to move the information. This can greatly reduce heating, which has become a major problem in electronics. These magnon circuits aren't market ready yet, but maybe they'll soon be. The idea behind Spintronics goes back several decades. The field really took off in the late 1980s when researchers discovered what's called giant magnetoresistance. That was a way to control electrical resistance by changing the magnetic orientation of very thin metal layers. By the 1990s, that had completely revolutionized hard disk drives, and in 2007, it earned Albert and Peter Grunberg the Nobel Prize in Physics. Without that discovery, portable computers and modern data centers would probably have been impossible. What's happening now is sometimes called the second generation of spintronics. Instead of just reading magnetic information, these new devices can also write it quickly and with very little energy. The principle is the same, using the magnetic properties of electrons, but the materials and manufacturing have advanced enormously. 
The latest versions use several layers of the material which carry the electron spins, each only a few atoms thick. Researchers have managed to turn what was once a niche laboratory fact into a practical technology that may soon power AI applications and consumer electronics alike. It's a rare example of fundamental physics translating almost directly into something you can hold in your hand. I wouldn't be surprised if there was another Nobel prize for spintronics. And when the press comes to ask me what I think, I'll pretend I understood the announcement while secretly googling the details. Very fast googling, of course, thanks to spintronics. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem solving is a skill you can train, just like any other. I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's an effective way to build up your knowledge and train your problem-solving skills skills. And you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.